Headline reads, Pokimane says that women struggle with the quote, glass ceiling on Twitch. Now, um, it's a couple things in here, a couple paragraphs in here, you know, that really support this. And I do agree. You know what I'm saying? And there's also a couple uh, content creators and streamers mentioned throughout this article where I do agree. So I will read those and pull those up. That way y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. And we'll get this information in. Hold on one moment. Okay. So um, the battery is slowly but surely dying. So I'm going to try and get through this as fast as possible. So be able to keep up. Right. So let's get into it. Pokimane recently pointed out that while women might have an quote unquote easier time breaking into Twitch, female streamers have to contend with a quote glass ceiling when they become established on the platform. She said that women have a limit to their career potential on Twitch. Quote, when you have 100 viewers, viewers or less, there's so many channels that when you're a girl, you stand out because there's just less girls than guys on this platform, which is true. The comments made by Pokimane mirror, the, mirror those of another popular streamer, Miss Kiff. Quote, I'm going to say something that's honestly true. Women have much easier time getting the initial 100 to 200 viewers. I'm sorry, it's just that that's the truth. And if you don't think that's the truth, then you're wrong. And that is the truth. You know, women do have it a lot easier in gathering up viewers and views really quickly. Because like they said, it's just a lot easier and women stand out more on the platform. So, you know, they're going to say it. So we just, I'm going to just keep reading. Ms. Kiff also explained, quote, women have a glass ceiling and it's almost impossible to get through. Men have an infinite ceiling. They are not hard capped. Women are hard capped at a ceiling of around 600 to 1,000 viewers. Similar to Ms. Kiff, Pokimane attributed the early the early early career success of women on Twitch to their visibility. Quote, when you're scrolling, if you see 10 guys and one girl, you're more likely to click on the girl. They stand out more. At the end of the day, Twitch continues to be a male dominated field. And when it comes to content, it tends to be easier to watch people you relate to. Until there's more of an even demographic on Twitch, you're going to have these issues. So that's just kind of the facts about it, man. Like at the end of the day, you know, that's that's right. You get open Twitch right now, go on the homepage, and you'll see a, a bunch of dudes. You'll see a bunch of men. And then you'll be just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And then you'll see the one girl in the list, the one woman in the lineup. And you'll be like, I'll click. Click, 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 click. I agree with that. That is true. You know what I'm saying? Do I now, do they have a glass ceiling of 600 to 1,000 viewers? No, not really. And my example will be Valkyrie. Valkyrie, she has way more than a thousand viewers. So I don't necessarily think women have a ceiling per se. I just think they have it. I just think it's the exposure. I think that's what it is. I don't think they hard capped at like 600 to a thousand views. I just think it's, it's content exposure. Like is your content really digestible for all parties and all viewing eyes. I think that's just what it is, but we'll keep going. Uh, let's see, I read that already. So let's go ahead and uh, keep going. Pokimane pointed out on the parasocial relationships frequently go hand in hand with success for women on Twitch. She said that female streamers often end up with hundreds of quote, parasocial viewers early in their career. If you only have 10 viewers, you're giving a lot of attention to those 10 people. When guys are watching a girl and she gets more popular, some will get bitter. They aren't getting the same attention from their queen. End quote. Mm, excuse me. Ms. Kip had previously made the same remark, noting that it's easier for female streamers to get more, view quote, it's easier for female streamers to get more viewers, but I'm telling you, they also deal with way more shit. Women deal with stalkers, they deal with annoying fucks, and they deal with men bothering them. But that's just how it is in streaming. Pokemon, I said Pokemon. You might as well be Pokemon, Pokemon. Pokemon has dealt with parasocial relationships before, but quote, that's just how it is in streaming, she said. So, how does this, right? How does all of this tie into the G4 debacle? Okay. So, 
now that I ran through this information and I said a little bit, I said, let's start from the top down. The G4 fall from grace. To be honest with y'all, I've made a lot of videos and scrapped them all. I made a lot of videos and scrapped them all on Frost, on G4, you know, just as a brand company. I made it over and over and over and over and over. Overwhelming evidence, overwhelming stuff. But then I thought to myself, do I really care? The answer was no, I don't give a fuck, right? What I cared about was that Frost gave up the sauce on how the show works or how their reviews work. She essentially let the cat out of the bag, letting it be known that they don't necessarily themselves do the review. There's a team of people because there's too many games. Hence the next clip. Here at X-Play, our reviews are written and produced by a team of people. There are too many games for one person to shoulder the burden. So we divide and conquer. And when we use language like we or I, that's the reviewer. That's coming from the mouth and experience of the reviewer reading that review. And that's not to say that Gerard, TBH, Adam, or myself don't contribute to the reviews. We absolutely do. But it'll always be in varying degrees and take a whole team behind us. That's why we're X play and not Adam play. We have done the experiment and controlled for the variables. Adam will read a script written by the same writer that I will read the other half of the script for, but I'll be the one flamed. Right. So now when you back it up even more, she said that, mind you, she hid all of this because the segment was like a grind my gear segment on you know a gripe in gaming or whatever so she made she so she threw it behind red dead redemption without re really touching on the gripe with the red dead redemption community or whatever the case in detail like she she threw out the headline and the title of the book and whatever the issue was but then she just said scrap all that women in game and made it that and sidewinded everybody hence clip so when this originally happened and my gaming grievance was actually going to be about Red Dead Online. So the subreddit for Red Dead Online, I'm a huge Red Dead Online player. I love Red Dead Redemption 2. I think it's probably my favorite game of all time. And right now the Red Dead Online community are trying to get this hashtag going called Save Red Dead Online. And they've got it covered by Kotaku, Polygon, um, Game Rants, like Forbes I think also did a coverage of it. And they think that this will get Rockstar's attention and... Rockstar will come back to them and give them exactly what they want. And we can actually scroll this down. I'll tell you when to stop scrolling. Good. Stop right there. But I'm here to tell you, and you're going to have to cut this B-roll in a second, because it's, uh, it's done. And what I think, I do think that there is a larger discussion about Red Dead Online and that we need to have eventually about game design versus immersive experience and comparing the Red Dead Online multiplayer experience versus the solo player one. But I actually want to talk about something so much more important than Red Dead Online. Sexism in gaming. So now, so now, right, you have to fast forward to when she says she actually pre-planned this and goes to the production team and the writers to get it in there and they put it in there. Hence this clip. And they didn't, I'm sorry. They didn't know that I was gonna do this. I wrote that during lunch and then I had a conversation with some of our writers and producers. And I was, I was just writing it as like a therapy thing. But then I was like talking to them. I was like, yeah, you're right. I'll put it in. And then our, one of our producers, Gabby, slid it in for me. So uh, I can, that was a trust fall on everyone's hands. <laughs> nah, that was great. So mind you, when all of this stuff was going on in real time, you had geeks and gamers, you had all these different YouTube channels, the quartering, all this stuff. I'm name dropping like a motherfucker this episode. And I, hold on, let me pick up these names I just dropped. Yeah. Cause I don't really do the name drops, but I keep it a K. I'm, I'm thorough and consistent through and through. So, you know, everybody made these reaction videos and commented about it and the Geeks and Gamers and G4 had this big back and forth. G4 just took the pussy route and was like, hey, if you don't agree with us, we don't like you. We don't want you as a fan. And he did all that. And I'm like, bro, I don't agree with a lot of people. 
you don't see me sitting here running a convenience store and be saying, oh, we don't like the same color, so you can't shop here. Like, that's dumb as hell. You know, it don't make no sense. So, with that being said, let's trickle it down to this, right? The, the female streamer thing. It's the same sense, right? Now, what did they say? Women content creators and women streamers have to deal with what? Stalker people, creepy people, motherfuckers who got this weird affinity form or whatever the case. To a degree, yes, but literally everybody is not cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So therefore, what what I think is your, your work will show. Your work will show. You just can't have the answer and then not show your work. Remember back in school when the teacher would be like, show your, you just can't answer the answer. You got to show your work. So apparently you just can't put two divided by six plus this equals that. You have to show the work. So, okay, I went over here, took the two over here. You do this, you do this, blah, blah, blah. Move this over, add this to the third power. And then you get this, but then you got to divide it by this to make sure you get that. So when you divide the answer from what you use, three fucking times and it come out as the same answer three times then you know you got the answer sometimes you like your work has to speak for itself so as to where frost okay you've been in the, she's been in the gaming industry for a while she's made reports she's done reviews whatever the case a lot of people made it about um you know, oh, she gave a bad review and that's why everybody gave her the backlash. I think it's something different when she was on the Boosted show. If you guys go through this and do the work, I don't know if I'm going to be doing the uh, the research and the work again to do all that because I unsubscribe from G4 and all that and I don't feel like fishing. Um, you know, where Avali made a joke, shout out to Avali, Avali made a joke about Frost being a lesbian and not being able to have kids saying because Frost said her and her wife is trying to have kids but they're failing and obviously said because you're trying with a woman. Nobody got mad. Everybody laughed because one, it's the truth. Two, it's actually funny. Three, what? That was maybe a time or two like a, a, a week or two before the airing of the whole Meltdown ep uh, episode. Now, you sit and take a lesbian woman, full-blown lesbian woman adult, she's struggling to have children with her in her relationship, decides to go on television, live on the air on television and on the internet, causes the brand and the company she works for to lose subscribers, to lose in the thousands people by saying it's men's fault because because she let everybody apparently get to her and hurt her feelings or whatever, like she stated, and stuff because they don't find her attractive or whatever the case. So because she's not found attractive by a certain group of people or one person or whoever the fuck, I don't fucking know. Hey, she just and then pre-planned it. And that's one thing everybody in all these response videos miss, that she pre-planned it. She pre-planned it. So now, this is the type of shit that's happening in the gaming industry. Now, female streamers have less of that issue. They just have the issue of exposure. That's what I think. They just have the exposure issue. Like, that's all there really is, exposure issue. I'm pretty sure if a lot of female streamers had the exposure that Valkyrie had, had the exposure that some of these bigger, uh, even Pokemon, they would be doing great. They wouldn't have to stress so much. I mean, shit, Pokemon popped off so hard, she ends up in the movie. Valkyrie got her own makeup. Valkyrie got all this. She hunted thieves. Like, like I think the work just has to show for it. And like how other people and groups of people, colors of people, whatever, got to work harder just because of that or because of what other perception is running things. That's just what it is. We playing video games. Elden Ring don't give a fuck if you a woman. Do you know how to press this X button with this A button with this circle button to do a combo? Like it, it just is it, hard to like find the line, right? 
of where it is and where it ain't. Now, I'm not for all dehumanizing people, but I am for holding people accountable. So this brings me to this. BBC, no, not the BBC you thinking, and no, not mine. The BBC news people, right? What they did was they did a little piece on women in gaming, feminism in gaming, and toxic masculinity or whatever on gaming. And what happened was some I was watching it and I'm just sitting here, okay, okay, I'm listening. Okay, okay. And women, you know, along the lines of what the article said, they deal with people calling them names, weirdos, people with just, you know, crazy affinities for them. And then the interviewer asked the following question, hence this clip. Like most games, it goes two ways. So one is they will say, oh my God, babe, I love you. This kind of weird stuff. Like they never seen a girl in their life. Sometimes it's like a toxic one. They'll be like, oh, woman, go back to the kitchen. So pretty general trash talk, so. There's mixed views about how to encourage more women into esports. One idea that's been trialled by Formula One esports this year is to guarantee a female player a spot in high profile tournaments. Others think the only way to get women onto the biggest stages is to split esports into male and female competitions entirely. But not everyone agrees. So, so you're saying that you wouldn't want there to be a division where women can't play against men? Oh, that'd be horrible. I wouldn't play the game if that was the case, um, personally. <laughs> so, tell me why. Can you explain that? Like at the current scene right now, I think all of us individually would be like, that would it wouldn't be fun. Like, we wouldn't have any competition or if we just only had to play against other women's teams, that just, um, like, the point of me playing every day is to improve and I just wouldn't be doing that. So when the interviewer asked her, would you want to compete in a all women's league? She said no. Why did she say no? Because there wouldn't be competition. So she essentially called all female gamers trash in comparison to male gamers indirectly. But y'all gonna sit here and act like she didn't say that because y'all gonna wanna play the semantics game. So because you wanna play semantics, that's what you wanna do. And that in this day and age with everybody being overly sensitive and everybody wanna play angles, that's all you want, that's all everybody gonna do. This video could go out, clips of this is gonna get chopped up, chopped up, and this is already a clip in itself. So they're gonna be thinking, what, this is a clip? How long is the show? Well, hey, this is a long episode, boy. I do this. 60 plus here, I do this. But hey, and that wraps it all up. If female gamers, streamers, content creators, if y'all thinking like that chick is in the BBC video where she's sitting here saying she wouldn't play in an all female league because of toxic masculinity and et cetera, et cetera, then guess what? You just gonna have to eat the bullet, man. You just gonna have to eat the bullet. That's how y'all is. It don't make no sense. All these semantics. Cut it out. At the end of the day, do I have anything against female content creators, female streamers? No, I don't. I don't. I actually am more... I have more of a relationship with female content creators than I do male creators. That's pretty much all I got to say about it, man. Feminism, this womanist stuff in gaming will not thrive. It will not. At the end of the day, you got to put your money where your mouth is. Your skill versus mine, Call of Duty. Your skill versus mine, Tekken. Your skill versus mine, puzzle games, any multiplayer game, anything. The issue that women have when it comes to gaming and the content creating streaming world is regular people shit like like all men ain't all these weirdos that had these weird affinities for motherfuckers but the thing is women y'all have to understand something y'all get all of these viewers just off your face y'all get these viewers off your face y'all get these viewers off your body didn't the one chick go viral for fucking deep throat and the sucking the dick on the fucking twitch I'm just saying, bro, 
Y'all know what it is. We know what it is too. But we don't complain about it. We got to work about it as men.